Right, I'm exploring some local woods to work out what aperture or f number is best for woodland photography. Why not come with me? Hopefully you can hear me above the roar of the water. Well, good afternoon and you find me in some local woods to be precise ash nest wood and what I thought I would do is just woodland is not one of my strong points and I need to learn and what I want to try and find out through experiment is what's the best aperture is it wide open with a narrow depth of field or is it closed with a big depth of field to get everything in focus I don't really know so what I want to do is just try and wander around the forest or the woodland try and find some compositions and see what difference it makes what aperture I use um, I might not come to any conclusions today it might be a case of seeing what the images are like and putting them up and uh, letting you decide and because it might not be possible to have actually processed them on the computer to see which is best so that's the plan today so we're in Ashness wood or forest whatever it's called and we're just going to wander around see what compositions we can come up with try different apertures and we'll see what we end up with and hopefully learn a bit about woodland photography which is not something I'm particularly strong at and do very often but I thought it would make a good change so anyway we'll see you a bit later right well, we've come up with a composition and I'm just gonna kneel down here so I can see the camera and what we're gonna do is you can see the tree there and literally the road we see any cars the road is literally just behind the tree but um, we'll start recording with the actual stills camera just so we can show I mean we've got the the main tree there more or less in the center so say the road is literally just behind there and then we've got Oh, it's focusing on me. <laughs> Finger. I've come quite low because I wanted to try and keep the branches separate. If I went higher, they started to overlap each other. And I've come slightly this way because I don't know whether you can see there's a tree trunk behind. And I wanted it to be definitely separate from not merging in. To the trunk of the main tree and then we've got some of the bracken and that down in the forefront and what I've done is I've taken two exposures one at f11 so I would imagine virtually everything is in focus and then also at 2.8 where the the tree trunk behind is starting to go out of focus and certainly the bracken in the front here is definitely going out of focus now it'd be interesting to see which is best as i said earlier on i'm not convinced we're actually going to come to a different <laughs> conclusion i might be able to put something up on the video at the end after i've done the processing uh to say what i think i mean it's uh, through this camera it's looking very green it, it, it the tree just the way that the, the branches are and I have a feeling um, I was gonna say is it an oak tree I'm not very good on on trees but it just just caught my eye an old gnarly tree as you can see it is quite a bit windy but yeah what we'll do is we'll put the video uh, put the video we'll put the, <laughs> the images up on the video after this and we'll put both images so you can compare and contrast 
Now, whether I've gone too extreme with F11 and 2.8 and whether something in the middle would be, be better, I'm not quite sure. But yeah, I mean, I think it makes quite a nice image there with the, um, they are slightly green, but the, they do look quite dark, the branches, although there is moss on them. So with the naked eye, they look quite green. Looking um, at the screen, they actually look quite black. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. And yeah, we'll see you a little bit later. Right, again we've not come much further and we've come up with another composition. Now whether these are good compositions or it's just me trying to capture everything that captures my eye just because I don't know what I'm doing in woodlands, but we'll have to see. But you can see there, you can see the camera and there's two little saplings and their colour just contrasts with everything around there um, there's browns and yellows and greens and then everything else is a sort of deeper green around and you can see the camera there what I'm trying to do is get relatively close to these you can see that the camera's quite high I've even put up the, um, the center column fortunately it's not particularly windy so that. but I wanted to be slightly looking down because if if we come down to look up we get in the sky and I didn't really want the sky in there so that that's why we've come quite high and what I've come round here um, you can see because they're actually separated if I was to go around and I've got to be very careful if we just shine at the bottom there you can see it's very there's quite a lot of water <laughs> it's very uh, mossy and boggy around here but if we'd come round like here the two sort of then merge into one another so I wanted to be round where we could get them see them as separate I was thinking of trying to get uh, the big tree trunk there in between but I couldn't quite come up with a good camera position where I could get them um, to do that as I say, I was trying to get relatively close, and I'll just explain why. Obviously, the further you're away, the, the larger the focal length that you, you zoomed in. And, and with a, a longer focal length, you automatically get a, a larger depth of field. I mean, at the moment here, we're still, well, we're probably zoomed in to about 40, but I have tried... Uh, taking again both f11 and 2.8 just so we can compare and contrast um, obviously if you get quite close I mean we know with macro if you do macro the depth of field is very very narrow whereas at 14 millimeters it's still even at 2.8 it's, it's it's a reasonably um, depth. we maybe need to see find something it's difficult to get close to get then to get the the overall feeling of the uh, of the wood etc so yeah but i think i'm quite enjoying this doing something different trying to learn what what works and what doesn't work and that and hopefully uh, as i say what i'll probably do is do a piece to camera after i've processed the images just to um, 
to say what I, what I thought about it all because um, it's very difficult looking on the back of the camera to assess these so yeah we're going to carry on see if we can find some other things and we'll see you a little bit later come across this um, I'm assuming it's a dead tree and I just thought it would make quite a good composition and I've even thought of a title for it dead amongst the living and we'll see that we've got the camera there again we've got it quite high on the tripod we're a bit low trying to avoid the lots of the sky it's quite difficult on this one but, as I say, again, I've come and, and trying to keep it sort of equal amongst the other trees, etc. And again, I've done it at 2.8 and F11. So, more just to compare. Again, it's... Um, if we're just trying to look at them on the back of the camera, it's, it's quite difficult. Um... Oops, that's the wrong way. You see, that's... Um, and there's a difference in light, and obviously the highlights are blowing out a bit. That's at... Uh, I think that's at 2.8. And then that's... at f11. On the back of the screen, there doesn't seem to be a lot of difference, so... As I as already said, it won't really show to process them on the computer. But I thought it would make a nice, different image. It, it, it's difficult because, yeah, wh whatever angle you look at it, 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 it's difficult to get a good composition. But hopefully that won't be too bad. So we'll try that and um, we'll carry on and see what else we can find. And we'll see you shortly. <laughs> up with another composition you can see it probably if I move back it will help there's this for want of a word gnarly tree that's spreading over the footpath and I saw it as we were 
obviously coming along the footpath um, but I felt it was better at looking back rather than when we're walking on and I've walked under it now and if we look right I don't remember maybe maybe there's a sh an image to be had at this side as well uh, although the problem is you've got more of the sky in in there and obviously if you come down I don't know I just felt it was was better the other way I'd seen it as we were walking along here and and I, I had been thinking is it a good idea just taking images at the extremes like f11 and 2.8 so with this image I've captured it I've put one in the middle as well so I've got 2.8 obviously doubled 5.6 which is two stops up and then doubled again which is 11 so yeah we've taken three different ones and we've taken slightly more because the light was changing and that I just I just like um, you see we'll see right next to the camera here that's probably fairly similar to the composition on the camera just trying to not get too much light but get the nice the boughs etc and the branches that just just add a almost make it like a tunnel so yeah I'm not quite sure totally quite sure about that we'll see what it comes like out on the computer I mean you can see now there's a bit of light coming through again just lighting up the bows uh, but yeah we can't stay all day I mean if we look if we look down to the river there you can see there's dappled light all over the the wood at the moment it's obviously clear the skies are clearer than when I first came so yeah, if this is any good, we'll put it up on the video um, and then we're probably going to carry on, maybe try and find one more composition and then head back home. It, it's probably getting on for five o'clock now and obviously we can't, I would have thought four or five compositions will make quite a good video, particularly if I'm going to do a piece at the end on my conclusions, which I'll, I'll do at home. So. Yeah, I mean, that's the footpath we're going to carry on. And I don't know whether you can see down there, maybe if I zoom in. There is the river. So we're going to work down to the river, see if we can see anything, and then look to head back. So, yep, we'll put it up and we'll see you a bit later. Right, well we've made it back to the road and so far we haven't come up with a final composition. Although we've got four which I think are reasonable so I'm not over bothered that I don't find another one. I'm not quite sure exactly how far we've got to walk, not that far. Whether we'd see anything from the road I don't know. But what the plan is is to go back to the van and then head home which is um, what 10 minutes away something like that and then what we're going to do we'll process the images sort out the video but what I will do 
it is to um, the sort of final piece on the computer on my final conclusions on which is best whether the the fully open so certain things are blurred or not totally in focus or the the narrow hole to get everything in focus so yeah we'll see you then but just to remind people as I walk along here if you've enjoyed the video please click the thumbs up if you like what I'm doing it would be brilliant if you could subscribe we are trying to grow the channel we're, we're now up to I think when I left home 740 so I've only got to go another 10 and then we'll hit, hit the 750 which is my target that I was looking to get to so yeah and by all means please do comment all comments are much appreciated if um, having seen because I will put the, the images up but you'll have seen them now both the um, wide open and the, the closed down images so if you've got any comments on those please put them up but as I say I'll well, do a short piece on the computer about my conclusions having um, seen them properly it's very difficult on the back of the camera to see them it's a bit like this video it's very very difficult <laughs> given you've got um, a screen that's probably less than an inch big so yeah anyway it's saying we're running out of room on the the chip on here so yeah we'll stop there and we'll see you um, back at home on the computer bye for now right we're now back at home and we've processed the images and here we've got the first image and as you can see this is the version f11 and everything is as i would expect more or less in focus and then if we go to the next one we get the 2.8 and the tree is going and the background is going slightly out and the bracken is out but the tree here is still quite in focus not quite sure about let's just if we get on that branch there now that's going slightly out of focus oops I, I must admit I quite like the general at the distance of not being quite in focus compared to it all being crisp although the, it's nice I think it's a matter of, of preference I I'm just a bit sorry that this branch here has now gone out of focus and it might have been a case it would have been better to have done it somewhere in between say the, the 5.6 um, I think often if you're focusing in on something like the tree here it is quite good if the other things start to fade slightly and I wasn't um, wasn't aware I've only just spotted it now looking at the, the, this branch here so say it goes in and out of focus as we go from one setting to the other um, but let's go to the next image and we've got here this is the f11 and everything is in focus the the saplings and the trees behind there's maybe a little bit of blur but that'll be because it was a little bit windy rather than um to do with the focusing and if we go there yeah you see i quite like that because the saplings are still well in focus but the background is going slightly burnt on that one i definitely prefer um it, it just melts it and it helps the 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 subjects to stand out more right this is the the third composition the, the dead tree and now that's the 2.8 and you can see certainly as we go back here is quite out of focus if whereas if we go in here it is it's <laughs> I have had a look and I find it difficult to compare because although I like whoops like the 
it's slightly blurred it's it's difficult to compare when the lighting conditions are you can see on the 2.8 we've got some light on the tree there and if we go to the next one there isn't and but I think on that one I still prefer the one where it's the background is going slightly out of focus because of the the wide openness of the lens and let's just get now this final composition was quite difficult because the light was changing so this is the 2.8 and I, I very much do like this and I think it's nice that we've got the the bracken in the background is going out of out of focus because of the aperture yeah you've got this and we've got some dappled light on the branches which just make it so much better and as we go up to 5.6 it's it's difficult because the light is is changing and it's difficult just to, to concentrate on the focus effect compared to to the light effect and then if we go to the f11 the light changes again but ev everything's in focus there and i think i just prefer on this occasion partly because of probably partly because of the light but that everything here is slightly out of focus yet the main subject the tree here the boughs the, the beginning of the path as in then it fades out as it goes through the forest i, I think that uh, so i think my conclusion is that in general as for woodland particularly if you've got a definite subject that the, the lower the aperture the better because then what is in the background or the foreground will be slightly muted slightly not quite in focus and then the concentration will be on the the subject of the um, the image be it a tree or, or whatever so that's the conclusion I've come to so anyway thank you very very much for watching and we'll hope to see you on the next video so bye for now